play by Gentry Walsh now. This time he got it, he got his hands on the offensive lineman, just rode him down the line of scrimmage. And when Morgan tried to go to the outside, look at this, Morgan's already got 94 yards just early in the second quarter on 16 carries. He's a workhorse, isn't he? Well, he's on his way to a 200-yard day the way this game is going. We have played just uh, just over a minute and a half here in the second quarter. And we've seen just exactly what we anticipated. Toledo, the running team, having to control the football, wanting to keep Randall Cunningham on the bench. Cunningham early, of course, showing the passing game going. Sager under center on third down. Third and five for Toledo on the Nevada Las Vegas 15-yard line. And a flag on the play. Too much time, Ed? Yes, too much time. Well, that is going to hurt the Rockets. This will put him back on the 20-yard line, and instead of third and five, it'll be third and ten. And we talked earlier, this is not really a good team on third down. Well, that's the type of situation that Toledo does not like to find themselves into. And you can see Dan Simro doesn't like that situation either because he knows that they're they're really not good in this situation. And uh, so far, in the body, even though they've they've been a little bit and given a little, they have tightened up when they've gotten down into the scoring area. Well, Glenn Burch, their starting tight end, came out of the game. You saw Coach Simro talking to his replacement, Jay Walsh a senior from Allen Park, Michigan, who sat out all of 1983 and some of this year after knee surgery, but he's now in the lineup. They have double tight end. You see Walsh going to the right side of the formation. Short drop, looking, throwing, and one of the, the defenders for the Rebels knocked that ball down, Keith London. Got his hand on the pass from A.J. Sager, and now the kicking team comes down for the Rockets. Well, that's a good job of the defensive lineman in the bottom of Las Vegas. They get, they start to rush them. He comes in and watch the hands go up the defensive lineman. See all their hands beginning to go up? The big hand there, put a little different. Good job by London. Get his hand up, put his hand on the ball. And, of course, now they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. David Walker earlier kicked one from 22 yards out. This one from 37 yards out. It is high, and it is to the left and no good and so the Rockets who were aided by penalties and some good offensive play by quarterback A.J. Sager and Steve Morgan couldn't make it will be right back the Rocket who in the past has been a female but this year is a male we are back at the California Bowl looking at the Nevada Las Vegas offense at Miles well, we're going to see the passing game again. Cunningham trying to read off the secondary. Nevada's defense. De Nevada's defense uh, holding things up. Randall Cunningham is the man at the controls. 8,020 career passing yards for this man, for this team. And he drills one that is incomplete. And as that was intended for the wide receiver, Tony Gladney, we go to our sideline man, Joe Rocco. Joe? All right, we've got the Toledo quarterback, A.J. Sager, to my left. A.J., Vegas doing anything in there to cause you problems that maybe you didn't expect? No, so far they're doing just exactly what we saw on film and uh, trying to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and rolling up a lot of man coverage on the receivers. What kind of a come-behind team are you? Uh, hopefully pretty good. We're moving the ball in right now. He's got to put the ball in the end zone. Thanks, A.J. And on second and ten, Kirk Jones. The Rebels' top rusher meets stiff resistance as Allen Harberson, the nose guard, senior from Toledo, stopped it. And the Las Vegas show and say, if you're going to run that ball in this short sideline, we're going to run in that short sideline too. One of these teams, and probably Nevada, running that ball in the short sideline. Look for them to somewhere quickly come back on a first or second down, run a type of reverse off that play because you get everybody pursuing into that short side, give a speed person the ability to run to the outside. Nevada Las Vegas an excellent team on third down and they are facing third and seven now from their own 23 with a seven to three lead over Toledo early in the second quarter here at the California Bowl a beautiful spiral right into the chest and the hands of Gladney who couldn't hold it but there's a flag down. Well, I think what he, what he called, and I think he called this on, on McGuire, the defensive back, was that he really came in there and punished Gladney right at the end, end of the play. Toledo fans, of course, not appreciating it. It's a personal foul. And Coach Dan Simrel, a little animated right now. Well, let's see if we, if we can pick it up as we look back. You see him going back. Now, he drills this pass. He puts it right into Gladney's hands. At the end of the play, when the ball hits in his hands and comes off of right there, now, boom, here comes McGuire. Oh, that's a tough call from the official standpoint. That young man didn't know that he didn't catch the ball. Very difficult call from the official standpoint. Very difficult. Uh, I don't blame Coach Simmerall for being upset on that call. Official could have, should have been no position to make that call. Should have got help from the other officials. Well, a lot of the 
the Toledo fans and coaches don't like it. But play continues as Nevada Las Vegas after Toledo has had sustained its first penalty. It's Nevada Las Vegas in the I formation first down from their own 38. Now he's audible in the play. He's changing the play whatever he had called the line of scrimmage. And Cunningham giving to Jones who went nowhere. The Rockets were right there on mass led by nose guard Allen Harbison and 29 getting up Clayton Moore. And there's a penalty on the play. It's like it's going to be holding against Nevada Las Vegas. <laughs> you see Clayton Moore very excited as maybe that penalty did a lot to uh, get the Toledo defense going Ed. Well I'm chuckling because uh, coaches in college always have the tendency to think the officials in college always work the same side. They like to talk to the officials on their side. <laughs> After that penalty from the opposite bench looked like official over this side called a very next play a holding play and I'm sure Simmerall says well maybe all that yelling and screaming I did paid off. Let's go to the referee. And Coach Harvey Hyde pacing in front of the Rebels bench. He's in his third year. He coached at Pasadena City College before coming to Nevada, Las Vegas. From the 28-yard line on first and long, a short screen. This one's complete, and Tony Lewis running. And is dragged down by Mark Patton, the strong safety, short of the 40-yard line. So they're back just over the original line of scrimmage, Ed. See, that was a great call by, the, by their coaching staff. He came out looking to the left. He did an excellent job of setting the screen up, too. The young man has great poise. As he went back to set the screen up, he kept looking out to the right side. There's a Toledo player down on the field out there, but he really did a good job of setting that uh, the screen up. So we're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. 7 to 3, the Rebels lead. We'll be right back after these messages from your local stations. And shaken on the play, was able to come off the field on his own uh, power, Mark Brandon. He's all right. Looks like he's okay. Came off on the own side. I'm probably shaking up a little bit. They're taking a good look at him. Their team doctors won't put him back in the ball game unless he's absolutely ready to go. He is Toledo's outstanding defensive back. So Brian Jones is in there now as a throw to the wide side of the field is complete to Michael McDay. Cunningham to McDay. And it didn't take him very long to pick on that replacement. Brandon went out of the game. Jones was in there, laid back off, and to come right out through a quick out to the side of the field where, the, where Brandon normally would be playing. That open side cornerback, a lot of pressure on him in college football. This is Michael McDade who went to Chicago Vocational High School in the Chicago Public League. He had 43 catches for 471 yards during the season. And now they're at midfield are the Rebels, leading 7-3. to three. We're still very early here in the second quarter. It is first down for Nevada Las Vegas. They're in the pro set formation. Once again now he's audible and changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Cunningham drills it and he hits his man and again it's Michael McDay. So Randall Cunningham is now starting to get warmed up Ed. Well Toledo plays a tremendous amount of zone defense and what he's doing he's taking a look at the strong safety number 40. When he sees him lining up to that wide side of the field he's you know he's six out of eight so far and the one that was an incomplete pass he's for 126 yards but he's looking at Patton if Patton's at that wide side he realizes that the underneath coverage linebacker has to really hustle to get to the outside that's why they have a tremendous passing game Cunningham can execute these plays second and short from just outside there's the a reverse we line. talked about there's that's reverse. right the reverse play and a big gainer for Ray Taylor Ray Taylor out of Compton, California, a junior, subbing for Gladney in the formation for Toledo, and a first down for the Rebels. Well, we talked about that earlier. We anticipated that, that they run into that short side. Here he is. He faked the handoff. Jones, here comes Taylor around to the outside now. One more block there, and he's taking that into the end zone. Wide open style of play by Nevada Las Vegas. Doug Eicher, 67, threw a nice block on the play, and Harold McGuire, Free safety made the Toledo tackle. So now Nevada Las Vegas leading seven to three still early in the second quarter inside Toledo's 25 and carrying the ball is number two Tony Lewis the fullback from El Camino High School in Los Angeles California. Well that's Short the first game. time we've seen him run a draw play and of course with the passing attack that's one of the things that goes with it the draw and occasionally a trap. Uh, we're seeing classic. West Coast football wide open versus the Mid-American running style. Now the running style you have to put points on the board. Toledo has been unsuccessful so far. From the 23 yard line second and seven for Nevada Las Vegas on the Toledo 23. Cunningham and he overthrows his man. He looked for 82 Ray Taylor 
the man who earlier made that reverse run and threw it too high. That brings up a third and seven. That's just a repeat of what we talked about there a little bit earlier. He had Taylor in the short side of the field, Toledo putting their zone into the wide side. He was open because the defensive back has to give off. He thinks that Taylor might be going deep. So he goes down, breaks to the outside. Very difficult coverage from the linebacker standpoint. And you're going to see them doing an awful lot of that. That's their quick series, their so-called 90 series, where he takes three step drop, delivers the ball. Third down, third and seven from the 23 of Toledo. Big play. Cunningham getting the protection he needs and throwing the ball complete in traffic inside the 10. And it's number 81. Brandon made the tackle. That's a good play by LaFrance now. That time the tight end, as he goes down, you see him reading the coverage. Toledo said, watch, watch LaFrance push off a little bit, get himself open in the zone now. He hits him in between the coverage of the zone. Brandon catch the ball. Now the defensive back has to come back in and make the tackle. Good reading by Cunningham on that play. Mixing it up, going to the outside. This time coming back to tight end LaFrance. 85, Reggie LaFrance, as we see one of the spectators here in the California Bowl. First down and goal from the seven-yard line. Randall Cunningham throws. And it is a touchdown for the Rebels as Kirk Jones goes in. And now Nevada, Las Vegas. Driving for a score that gets them ahead 13 to 3. Well, that's a companion play of the first touchdown. Remember early in the game where he threw the slant pass to that to that receiver. This time the receiver ran the slant pass, but now the back, Kirk Jones came out of the backfield into the flats. You'll see the you'll see on the outside of there, if you see the split end will come on the slant play. You see Cunningham looking for him. You see the Toledo players react to that, but he comes off, throws the ball out to Jones. Jones takes it into the end zone. Good job, good call by Cunningham. Good job of mixing up the defensive people's thinking. So Nevada, Las Vegas, a team that played 12 games during the course of the season because they played a game at Hawaii, enabling them to play 12. And the extra point try is no good. It hit the, it hit the goal post, bounced off to the left. That could be a big play later on in the ball game. Next extra point. Joey DiGiovanna hit the left upright. 13 to 3, Nevada Las Vegas leads. And we'll be back right after these messages. And the scene at the California Bowl, Dwayne Dow with Ed Biles. Glad you could join us. This marks the third game, Ed, that I've been out here to cover in Fresno. Uh, people have treated us very well in the San Joaquin Valley. A little chilly. We had some wind coming in. I know these players have enjoyed their visit here for the past week. Well, it's for a good cause for the Valley Children's Hospital. And you see them go in and visit with those with those players. And you know, it makes a great outing. It's, Las Vegas had 13 to 3 here, but it's, it's really been what we anticipated. Toledo trying to run the ball, trying to control it that way, Nevada being wide open. The only difference being that Toledo has not put that touchdown on the board yet. And so the return man for the Rockets are Eddie Harris and Kelvin Farmer. Dave Duran kicking off. Just to accentuate the contrast between these two teams, Nevada, Las Vegas has three different men doing their kicking. Toledo only has one man doing all of their kicking. And this kick goes out of bounds as a flag drops and they'll kick it again five yards further back. Now Nevada Las Vegas lost its final regular season game decisively when they couldn't stop the running attack of Southern Methodist. Toledo in their last regular season game played the Temple Owls on the road and were beaten decisively. Well you're talking about the things they were looking at here today though. Toledo hasn't been able to make that running game going as successful as the SMU Mustang who have a great running attack and a, and a fine football team now you're seeing a typical West Coast type team throwing the ball a typical mid-American team that plays a lot of zone they do not see a lot of passing in that and when they get in situations where they have to play a little bit more man to man and mix things up they have some problems with the passing game now they have got to just take this. It's a very crucial drive from Toledo's uh, Dan Simmerle's tempo. He realizes that if they get the ball and drive it down and put a touchdown on the board, they're back in the ball game because of that next extra point. But should they not move the ball and Cunningham get his hands on it again, then it could be a long halftime for him. So Dave Duran, sophomore from Las Vegas, who played one year at Wyoming, sat out last year, gets this one down the middle of the field. Is Eddie Harris and Harris comes up toward midfield and that's what Toledo needs. That's exactly what they needed. A, a lift, ran it on the short side, picked up some blocks. The kicker had to make the had to make the tackle. And you see, as we 
get this Harris coming off the field. He's the fastest player. There's a four, he'll run a four, five, 40. We got, I think we got a good shot. As you see the, the blocking development, watch him coming up through there now. He breaks it to the outside. You see the kick out block. Now you see the blockers looking ahead. Watch the, watch the peel back there by 33 on seven. And here you go, with your, when your kicker has to slow him down to help everybody on the tackles, they're starting in great field position on the 50 yard line. So let's see what the Rockets can do. Trailing Nevada, Las Vegas, 13 to three. Sager hands off and Morgan runs up the middle and gains eight to the 42 of Nevada Las Vegas and making the tackle for the Rebels was Aaron Moog the defensive right end he played with a broken wrist through 1983 and is considered the top lineman oh, he's for the a, Rebels he's a good player he made honorable mention Associated Press was the outstanding defensive player in the, in the Pacific Coast Athletic Association Conference and with that run I believe we've got Morgan going over the 100 yard mark uh, before halftime Second down, second and two for the Rockets on Nevada Las Vegas 42 yard line. High formation, wide receivers to either side. And a fake, and Sager did give it to the running back. I thought he kept it for a moment. And it was Jerome Stevens getting that first down to the 40 yard line, and they're moving the yardage chain. Well, that's kind of a play that the, the coaches call to keep the defense honest uh, type thing. They have to have the threat of Stevens running inside, so the linebackers and the defensive linemen just can't play outside shoulder all the time. And they don't expect to make big yardage off of it, but they have to make them conscious of it. Still eight minutes and 35 seconds left here in the first half. Lots of time for Toledo to get back into the game. They trail 13 to 3, first and 10 on the Nevada Las Vegas 40. A.J. Sager. And he looked good on that pass, but fumbling the ball to Toledo was Bill Poor. Now, Bill Poor, who made a big catch in the initial Toledo California Bowl victory three years ago, made a big drop there. And coming up for the ball was strong safety Harvey Allen. We'll be right back after these messages from your local stations. Now, back with you, ladies and gentlemen, along with Ed Biles. And we are at the California Bowl, where it is 13 to 3. Nevada, Las Vegas with the ball and a big drive starting here, Ed. Yes, yeah, a key defensive series now. If they go in and get another touchdown, it would really hurt to. Uh, and breaking, breaking free is history. Kirk Jones. Jones goes over the 40 yard line and is finally pushed out of bounds by Mark Brandon, who was back in the game after being shaken earlier. Kirk Jones, sophomore from Long Beach, California. He's a fine look. He's a fine looking back. He takes this and dips it inside, dips it back to the outside. There, watch him come inside now and work his way back to the outside on the play and shows good enough speed to outrun McGuire coming up, trying to make that tackle, trying to use his blocker and picks up some additional yards. He's got three carries now for about 25 yards. And with the passing threat of Cunningham, that accentuates the ability of Jones. So out they come, Lewis, the up man, and Jones, the tail back in the eye. Play action by Cunningham. Throws short. And this one's complete for just a short gain to Tony Lewis, the fullback, who among the backs had more catches than anybody else for Toledo. Well, once again, Dwayne, you're seeing the thinking ability of Randall Cunningham. Toledo that time had taken their strong safety patent, put him into that short side. When they do that, they're playing a three deep zone coverage, kind of what, what coaches refer to as a weak zone where they're going into the short side. And he came back out and threw the ball to the back out in the flat side. Second down and eight for the Rebels on their own 46. One more touchdown and it would really be difficult for Toledo, a ball control team to come back. And on an inside handoff, a run to midfield by Tony Lewis. Now this is going to become a crucial play. This is a crucial defensive series from Toledo's standpoint, as you said, because another touchdown puts them up 20 to three, and he has some problems. Now with a third down situation, the Toledo defensive players even recognize this. Take a timeout. They know they have to make this play. It's extremely, very extremely important now that it's a third down and four situation. Should Toledo make this defensive play? going to give their offense a chance to get the ball back. They stopped themselves offensively, you know, with the fumble there on that. They had been moving the ball. And on the other hand, if Nevada makes this play and goes on into score, now from Coach Simmerall's standpoint, he recognized the importance. You see him talk to that defensive team. Is he he realized, oh yeah, he realized the keenness of this one play early here or midway in the second quarter could have a big bearing on the outcome of this football game. The man who made that last tackle was Clayton Moore. And here we have a young football fan 
I'm sure he's ready for the visit of Santa Claus about 10 days from now. Well, he just recognized, at, at that young age, he just recognized he was on TV because he gave everybody a big wave with that mitt. Ah, yes. This is not uh, this is not good weather for the California Chamber of Commerce's uh, day, I don't believe, Dwayne. Third down and four at midfield for Nevada Las Vegas in the pro set formation with Randall Cunningham on the possession down right through the hands of number 24 Byron Brown who is in the game for Jones at the tailback position a junior college transfer out of Ventura Junior College. Well that was to sometimes the coaches vernacular say that was a defensive backs best friend is a drop ball and that's what that boy that's what that boiled down to Eddie Harris going back on single safety and in the punt formation as uh, Toledo was held on this big series we have Randall Cunningham the quarterback in punt formation with a career punting average of 45.6 yards per kick. This fellow is a boomer. A starting quarterback also one of the top kickers in the United States. But he shanks this one downfield as it crosses the 20 and the Rebels surround it as it rolls between the 20 and 15 yard line. Well he was really trying to get it to the out of bounds inside the 20. We'll be back. Right after these messages. Well, let's go up here in Fresno, California. Is during our time out, Ed, that rain really came up. Hey, that was only a 33-yard punt. Only 33 yards by Randall Cunningham. You sound just like a fan now, Dwayne. <laughs> it's only a 33-yard punt, but he accomplished his purpose. The ball is inside the 20-yard line on about the 17-yard line. If he'd have boomed it into the end zone, he'd have got credit, but that had been on the 20-yard line. Coach, I hear you. All right, ball on the 17-yard line for Toledo. The Rockets needing a touchdown before the half. And they got nowhere there as it's Darnell Pickens making the tackle on defense and carrying the ball was Jerome Stevens for no gain. Toledo has had opportunities to score but have not been able to. Yeah, that Darnell Pickens is a, is a freshman here from Fresno. You know he's from Fresno himself. He's good looking young linebacker. He's in there in place of Pooley who was because of an NC2A ruling was ineligible to play in this ball game. Right three players on defense Damon Perry Tom Pauley and Dalton Reed not here along with sub tight end David Brown because of an eligibility for this game. Now it is second down and 10. And Morgan comes up to the 24 yard line. He is three yards short of the first down. Steve Morgan already over 100 yards rushing today. And now let's go down to the field. Let's go down to our man, Mr. Joe Rocco. Joe? Well, Dwayne, as if it uh, hasn't been miserable enough down here, a few minutes ago it was hailing here in sunny California. So maybe the reason for Randall Cunningham's 33-yard punt may have also been the high winds that accompanied it. So it certainly won't be easy for A.J. to get it in the air and get Toledo moving downfield with the weather conditions. We'll see what happens. I'll tell you, Ed, that's the nattiest-looking man in a hailstorm you'll ever see. All right, Sager carrying. Oh, look at him spin away. He had no one in front of him, but he did manage to carry it out to the first down over the 30-yard line. They had him stop for not enough for the first yard. He's that extra effort he put in. A nice spin move of coming off the tackle and making of making that first down, running that option play into the short side lane. He's starting to make the fake to the fullback. Now comes with the option to the short side. He stopped for loss here, but he spins and keeps his leg going. He made extra effort to pick up that big key first down. Toledo needs to get some points on the board on this drive. Well, Darren, Daryl Knox and Willie Davis had him sandwiched, but then he got five more yards. They forgot to wrap those arms completely around him, though. Indeed, they did. All right, ball on the 32-yard line for Toledo, battling the clock. Five minutes, 12 seconds left in the first hand. That'll be enough time for a lot of teams, but Toledo needs a lot of time on their game. All right, it is Sager. Sager looking. Gunning one, completing the crowd with the 40-yard line. Davis made the tackle as it was uh, 24 Bill Poor in the catch. Well, this is a typical possession type team pass. What did Poor went to the outside like he was going outside, then he reversed and came back on the underneath pattern. You see this play an awful lot with it. Tight end will clear out. Poor, of course, is a good hand, best hands on the team. That's the type of plays that Toledo normally does. They're moving the ball and controlling it. They're going to battle the clock, though, on this, on this drive. Four and a half minutes left in the first half. The battle Las Vegas in white, leading Toledo in dark, 13 to 3. Ball just over the 40 yard line on second and short. See if they go to the air here. Indeed, they will. Sager down the middle of the field and through the hands of two defenders and jumping up and down is Ed Sains. 
the free safety junior college transfer from Pierce Junior College. Well, he played the ball perfectly. He was back there in the middle of his own kind of freelancing, which he's supposed to do. He was reading Sager's eyes all the way, got a good break on the ball, just forgot to catch it. He's had four interceptions already this year, so he does have good hands. And you see Toledo's now into the type of game they don't like to play. They're having to put the ball up in, up in the air. They really don't like to do that. Now the Rockets on the 41-yard line, and they go into the power eye formation. On third down and a long one from just beyond their 40. And Morgan goes for the first down as he cracks ahead to the 45. You see that ball getting a little slippery out there. It's bouncing around, coming free a little bit. But I believe he was down. I don't think there was any doubt. They did make the first down, key first down. They've got to get the plays in quicker. They're going to get this accomplished in this four minutes. I really don't think they're going to make a lot of big plays in the passing game unless someone misses the tackle for Nevada Las Vegas. Well, it's only 13 to 3. The Rebels have missed a few opportunities on their own, as have the Rockets. There have been penalties throughout. Is that a nice stat for Steve Morgan? 19 carries, 115 yards at this stage of the ballgame. Came into the game with 1,137 yards rushing on 305 carries. Truly a workhorse for Toledo from the 45 for the Rockets. And as Morgan, he still looks fresh, Ed, as he cracks into Nevada, Las Vegas territory. And I wonder if he'll be running like that in the fourth quarter. Well, I'm sure he will. Anyone's carried the ball that number of times. But you know, earlier we saw Dan Simmerall, the coach of Toledo, being excited about what was going on. You saw a shot to play before this of Harvey Hyde, the coach of Nevada. He recognizes from his standpoint the importance of his defensive team keeping Toledo out of the end zone. He realizes if, if they score on this drive, they go into the halftime with a lot of momentum. If they don't, his team retains the momentum that they have. Toledo 46 yards away from the end zone. Second down and one on the 46 of UNLV. Three minutes left in the first half and trying to get the first down. The Rockets very close. We'll see where they spot the ball. They didn't, I don't think they made it. They've got about, they got about six inches to go. I think it's third down. If the ball's right on the line and the first down marker is just ahead of that. And the clock is running, see, with all this time now. Toledo either gonna ask for the measurement or take a timeout because they're wasting time right now. The clock is still running. So third down and half a yard from the 45-yard line of Nevada, Las Vegas. Two minutes, 23 seconds left in the first half. Everyone in tight in the power eye for Toledo. They've got to get that first down here. They went play action before. Good time to do it again if they, if they have that type of feeling. A.J. Sager and apparently getting it. He made the first down. He made enough, unless the officials don't give him a good spot. It was Kelvin Farmer tailback going into the crowd. Sophomore from Lakewood, Ohio, and he did get the first down. Farmer is a, a loop about the same size as Morgan, but he got the short yardage call there. And so Toledo from the 44-yard line of now Nevada, Las Vegas, clock stop of two minutes and seven seconds and now rolling on down as we approach two minutes left in the first half. And Toledo score a touchdown here before the half is out. They sent two receivers to the right. I formation. Poor and Hutchinson are both wide right. Oh, a fumble! And covering the ball is Farmer. So they had those two receivers to the open side and then ran the short side. Well, that's a shame. They had the play there. He again run that option into the short side. The play was there. It was wide open. He'd have made some yardage. The pitch looked like a good pitch. But what he did, Farmer took his eyes off the football. He was looking to see where the defensive people were at. Took his eyes off the ball. Didn't look it into his hand. That's what causes fumbles. And you don't see this Toledo team make many fundamental mistakes. There is a flag in the play, Ed. Well, I think Toledo, uh, it looked like there was a penalty downfield there. I don't know what the call was. And well, the referee, Joe Thomas, holding, indicates holding on the Rockets. Declined. And it's declined by Nevada Las Vegas as they have confidence in their defensive unit uh, to keep the Rockets Rock. away from any touchdown before the end of the first half. Well, Clock. The, the, problem the, Toledo had, the problem with Toledo having right now is they're not used to playing catch-up football. They're not used to having to fight the clock, and you can see it in, in the things that they're trying to do. If you're not getting out of the huddle quick enough, not calling plays, that's the problem with the running game when you're behind. Second and long, just a yard inside midfield. Sager throws underneath, and it's Kelvin Farmer running down inside the 40, and while he fumbled before, he made an impressive run there, and then some hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
on the sideline. Oh, he did a great job. It was a great call by the Toledo coaching staff. He sets us up for the screen pass. You see the lineman coming out on the screen. Now, watch Farmer as he gets down in here. He makes great effort to get back, to get outside, to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Watch him fight his way here now. Continuing effort, not second, but continuing effort all the way. Finally gets knocked out of bounds, stop the clock. Great Anthony play by Blue. Farmer. Anthony Blue, the right cornerback out of Inglewood, California, who made 71 tackles out of the secondary during the season, led the charge. Now, third down, third down and a long two from the 37-yard line. And he didn't get it. No, but they'll go for it on fourth down. I wouldn't be a bit surprised uh, how many timeouts they've got left, but they better hurry up or use a timeout as that clock is, is against them now. They're down underneath a minute. You gotta get the plays in there in this situation. I'm sure possession time is solidly in favor of Toledo in this first half. Well, but possession time doesn't mean anything if you don't get points out of it. Possession is important if you put points on the board when you're a control team. And now we have a timeout. And Nevada Las Vegas has decided to call a timeout with 41 seconds left in the first half. And this team in white, their official colors are scarlet and gray. Kind of odd to see a team from Ohio battle a team that has scarlet and gray for their official colors. And there we take a look at Dan Simrel in his third year at Toledo. And we were talking about him being a uh, a oh. native of Toledo and a fellow who's uh, hardly ever left town, right? Well, it's tough to be a prophet in your own hometown, but he's defied that. He went to high school in Toledo, went to University of Toledo, played as a quarterback. I was an assistant coach in Ohio in those days when he was playing, then went into high school coaching in Toledo, came back to Toledo University as an assistant coach, and is now a head coach there. Well-liked, has a good sense of good sense of humor, does an has done an outstanding job as a head coach there. And on the other side, of course, Harvey Hyde, the head coach of Nevada, Las Vegas, in his third year, a very intense man. Intense, but he has taken this team to their first championship in the 16-year history of the school. Says a lot for the job that he has done. And he realizes again the importance. He does not want <laughs> Toledo to get any points in these last 41, 41 seconds of, of this half. They all recognize the importance of what momentum can swing here. If Nevada stops them, they don't get points, then Nevada goes in that halftime charged up. If Toledo somehow gets some points in his last 41 seconds, they go in with great momentum. Both coaches recognize the, you know, the seriousness of this situation. Ball in the 36-yard line on fourth and a long one. Now the Rockets have to get the ball between the 35 and the 34 on this play or surrender possession with 41 seconds left in the first half. From the power eye, quarterback A.J. Sager pitching back to the money man. And Morgan got the first down as he crossed the 35. And he got possibly just inside the 34. But now they're really fighting that clock, Ed. 35 seconds left in the first half. Well, you know, the clock will, will stop while they move the chains, but it will start. They have to get in the huddle. They should have had that second second play call. Watch the clock. So now the clock is winding. Toledo is still in the huddle. They've got to get out of the huddle up that line of scrimmage because they really are battling. Now it's down to 29 seconds. Nevada, Las Vegas leading 13 to 3, making the clutch plays if you've just joined us. This will be a very interesting second half and a nice halftime coming up for you. So stand by some interesting features. And in a crowd. There's a battle for the ball, and if it's a tie, you know, they give it to the offense. And I believe that's what they'll call it there. Now, maybe uh, it's clearly in the rule book, Ed. That uh, it, no, no question. Hutchison catches the ball. Simultaneous catch goes to the offensive player. The problem you have right now, Toledo takes a timeout wisely at this point because there's only 13 seconds left on the half. Good call by the officials. Anytime it's a simultaneous catch, it goes to the offense. And that's the best example of a simultaneous catch you'll ever see. You won't see a better one than that. Both of them with their hands on the ball. Hutchinson doing an outstanding job of hanging on that ball. Sophomore out of Dayton, Ohio. So we have an interesting situation developing. The Toledo Rockets, who with under a minute to play in the game in 1981, kicked the winning field goal to upend San, o uh, San Jose State, now are just trying to draw close to Nevada, Las Vegas before halftime in 1984. And this is where the key importance of not having used your timeouts. See, Toledo right now does not have any time, any time. They, on the 
clock, no timeouts left. They've used 14 plays on this drive, started their own 17, but there are only 13 seconds left, and if they run the ball, they may not get another playoff. So it's very key how they handle this. At least they'd like to get an attempt to get a, to get a field goal out of it. All right, Coach Ed Biles. What do you do in this situation? Well, you've got to put the ball up in the air, and you can't put it, you know, you don't want to put it across the middle because you know you won't get into the end zone with it, so it has to be something to the outside where the guy has a chance of getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. You can get three or four plays done in, in 13 seconds if you if you set quick and deliver the ball. From the 19-yard line, first and 10 for Toledo on the Nevada Las Vegas 19. A.J. Sager looking, going for six points. Oh, poor, who's had a tough first half. Could not hold the ball, but there was excellent defense by left cornerback Charles Dimery out of Oceanside, California. Well, they're going to they're going to take or attempt to take the short three points. Not a bad decision because if they make this, it puts them right within a touchdown of being back in the ball game. They took a chance on going in the end zone. Good call, ran a corner, threw the ball to Billy Poor, who's their best receiver in best hands. Just wasn't able to hang on to it. All right, now a field goal attempt, and Walker. We'll try from 36 yards out. David Walker with the kick. Hand over end and through the uprights. And so the Toledo Rockets, with three seconds to play in the first half, have nudged just a bit closer. That was a big three-point play from Toledo's standpoint. You can see the enthusiasm on the sideline. They have been moving the ball. They have confidence that they can move the ball. They have stopped themselves several times. 